Hey guys, Levelcap here, and this week in gaming, Call of Duty issues a major apology, Battlefield brings back a fan favorite mode, PlayStation and Xbox take very different approaches when it comes to their new consoles, and much more. And before I get into all the fun details there, I've got a quick word from today's sponsor. Guys, I am so excited today because Origin PC and Nvidia have teamed up to give away a custom Battlefield 2042 themed PC to one of my viewers. It is a baller rig with the latest generation Intel CPU, an RTX 3080 Ti, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM rated for an insane 5200 megahertz, some liquid cooling PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, and it's all packed in a gorgeous tempered glass side panel case from Corsair. Do not miss out on this opportunity. To enter, all you have to do is click on the link in the video description or in the pinned comment. Now with hardware scarcity, this is a great opportunity to finally get that PC upgrade that you've been wanting. And even if you don't win the contest, Origin PC now has ready to ship desktops for those who need a PC right away. And all of Origin PC's ready to ship desktops include a free Corsair K50 RGB gaming keyboard valued at 50 bucks, a free Corsair Harpoon RGB gaming mouse valued at 30 bucks, a free Corsair Void RGB Elite Wireless Premium gaming headset of $100 value, and free US ground shipping. Origin PC have been one of my channel's longest running sponsors and they've always provided both excellent hardware and support. So not only are you getting a top of the line gaming machine, you're also getting the peace of mind that is backed up with solid customer service. If you're looking for a chance to win a beast of a PC, use my link in the description. Again, a huge thank you to Origin PC and Nvidia for sponsoring this giveaway. Once again, click on that link in the video description and it will have all the rules and restrictions. All right, back to the news. Call of Duty's publisher, Activision, released a statement on their social media channels this week addressing and acknowledging the countless bugs and issues that are plaguing their Call of Duty lineup this year, promising players that they hear us and feel the community's frustration and will deliver bug fixes and address concerns as soon as possible. They emphasize that the community feedback is critical to the development process and that we should expect to see proof of this very soon with updates to Call of Duty Vanguard, Warzone, and Modern Warfare. Most notably, console performance on the new Warzone Pacific map, Caldera is being looked into, as well as a bug causing some cosmetic items to appear as invisible. Other changes include further balancing to the weapons roster, as well as gadgets and issues related to the attack dog killstreak in Vanguard multiplayer. For Zombies fans, the devs even seem to be adding back in the option to pause the game. And the fan reception to this statement was quite positive. Many players commended the apology message, noting that it's a good start in the recovery process. Now the work just needs to put into actually fixing all of these issues. But that's where I hand it off to you guys. Do you think that Call of Duty can and will improve, or do you think that these promises sound like half measures? Discuss your opinions in the comments. Battlefield fans are, of course, seeking the same apologies from EA that Call of Duty has been giving. As of now, EA and Battlefield have not issued any sort of apology or acknowledgement for the poor launch state of Battlefield 2042. It seems as though the wheels are once again beginning to turn at DICE, however, as direct communication has finally resumed after the holiday season. Both 2042 Rush and Rush of Ages have been added back into the Battlefield Portal mode rotation, as well as a play on the Squid Game's red light green light mode called Run Stop Kill Repeat. Rush being added back into Portal has pleased many players as a lot of the core player base has agreed that 2042 Rush offers some of the best gameplay out there, with performance on PC and consoles also benefiting massively from the lower player count and smaller map sizes. The senior design director at Ripple Effect, Justin Weeb, also mentioned on Twitter that Portal will gradually phase in progression, meaning players will hopefully be allowed to earn XP on Portal servers of their own making. This is undoubtedly the biggest hiccup with Portal. With no XP being rewarded, there's very little incentive to actually play any custom servers. Hopefully a workaround can be introduced soon. The new weekly missions for Battlefield 2042 also have gone live, rewarding players with this great outdoor skin for the Specialist McKay. The requirements are as follows, revive or be revived 30 times, replenish 2000 HP worth of teammates health and kill or kill assist 50 enemies. Let us know what you think of this new cosmetic item in the comments section. 
Microsoft has stopped manufacturing the Xbox One S console in order to shift production focus to the newer Xbox Series X and S consoles. This follows Microsoft stopping production of the Xbox One X back in January 2020. According to the Xbox boss, Phil Spencer, more Series S consoles can be produced for the same amount of resources as the Series X, despite more Series X consoles being made initially. Spencer also stated that the Series X and S consoles have sold more than any any other generation of Xbox consoles in the past, but the company's next task was meeting consumer demand. Sony, on the other hand, seems to be taking a much different approach to the production shortage. Team PlayStation have canceled their plans to discontinue the PlayStation 4, instead opting to extend the console's life through 2022. More than 1 million PlayStation 4s will be manufactured this year to fill the PlayStation 5 supply gap, though Sony could of course adjust that number based on consumer demand. Historically, PlayStation consoles tend to overlap quite significantly with the newer versions, though Sony seems to be pushing for a shorter transition period this time around, as many PlayStation 4 titles can be played on the PlayStation 5 from the get-go, not to mention the PlayStation Plus subscription. On top of this, Sony seems to be gearing up to announce their rumored Xbox Game Pass competitor. Physical PlayStation Now subscription cards are being removed from retailers in the UK, the US, and Canada. This further suggests that Sony will be changing things up with an updated subscription service more similar to Xbox Game Pass. Sony's PlayStation Now numbers pale in comparison comparison to that of the Game Pass. Sony has 2.2 million subscribers after six years of the service being active, while Xbox boasts a total of 18 million users just two years after launch. It's of course no surprise that Sony wants to get in on that action with their own subscription service, we just need to wait a little longer to find out what exactly it will offer. Right now, it's still rumored to be unveiled in the spring. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds is officially free to play. The game launched as a free to play title on January 12th on all platforms and instantly saw player numbers and retention soar. On Steam alone, the player count climbed as high as 668,000 players, significantly beating its previous two months of peak player counts by around 300,000. Though PUBG didn't even come close to reaching its all time player peak count, achieved back in 2018 of 3.2 million players on Steam. Team. That being said, it's still a significant boost compared to the steadily declining numbers the game had seen since early last year. Unfortunately, it's not all good news for PUBG, as with more players joining the game, there are far more complaints online. Most notably, the PUBG store page received almost three times the number of negative reviews in one day than it did in the past month. Some players complained about cheaters in-game, while others complained about not getting refunds after purchasing the game not long ago. Thankfully, players that bought the game before it went free to play are automatically upgraded to the Battlegrounds Plus version, which includes access to ranked play, the ability to create custom matches, a 100% XP boost, 1300 G coins, and a bundle of cosmetic rewards, all of which would normally cost $12.99. Crytek has forced the popular and Patreon-supported modder Franz Buma to remove their photo mode mod. The Universal Unreal Unlocker mod was created by Buma and funded by their fans in order to enable a powerful photo mode for different Unreal Engine 4 games. Fans praised the mod for its functionality and liberating freedom as it allowed talented players to capture moments in game that would have previously been impossible to record. Last year, Buma created similar mods for Crisis Remastered 2 and 3 and sold them through their Patreon account to support fans. Crytek issued a takedown request stating that the end user license agreement did not allow for the use of mods. Buma fought back, however, stating that the mods were built entirely on their own code and didn't actually make use of Crytek's own assets in any way. However, Crytek took further issue with how Buma was monetizing the mods. Eventually, the argument was caught in the crosshairs of the Crisis subreddit, which forced Crytek to issue an apology, stating that they should have handled things better, but that their opinion on the matter was unchanged. As of now though, the modders have shared that they will never create custom photo modes for Crytek games again, a huge loss for the creative community around those titles. 
According to Valve, the Steam Deck is still on schedule to launch next month. In a blog post detailing the recent developments with the Steam Deck, Valve shared that while global supply and shipping issues have certainly hindered the product, things are still in motion for it to release in February. Of course, like with most tech products, things could always change. For the Steam Deck in particular, it too was originally delayed as it was intended to launch in December last year. However, just weeks before, Valve pushed things back due to ongoing issues with the pandemic. What is reassuring though is that work and testing for the Steam Verified program is underway these extensive tests for different games determine whether or not the game is suitable or functioning well enough for the Steam Deck. It seems like these tests would only take place if the hardware was locked in place. Speaking of gaming hardware, Razer has admitted that its masks are not N95 grade. They have removed all mention of N95 grade protection from the Zephyr and Zephyr Pro products page. As reported last week, Razer's masks were getting some flack recently over the core design flaws pointed out by Naomi Wu in November. And while the filter used in the mask may very well have been N95 grade material, the whole mask at its core design didn't offer a similar level of protection. On January 8th, Razer shared an article detailing the science behind their filter and mask, claiming that their masks offer greater protection over cloth or disposable options. Included in the article is the statement that the Razer Zephyr and Zephyr Pro are not certified N95 masks and are not meant to be used in medical or clinical settings. Many have called for Razer to entirely remove their Zephyr mask from their lineup of products and issue refunds. There's even talk of legal action being taken against their false advertising. In some lighter news, this year's Awesome Games Done Quick has already raised over $1 million as of January 12th. Incredibly, this $1 million was raised in under just 24 hours, making it the fastest any Games Done Quick event has ever pulled in money so far. The event went on from there and will continue over the weekend to raise even more money that will be donated to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Before we get on to our final news story of the video, let us know in the comments whether or not you think game publishers should issue apologies for poor game receptions. With Battlefield in mind, should EA acknowledge the shortcomings of Battlefield 2042 formally, or would it just hurt their brand? Final Fantasy XIV's Endwalker expansion proved to be so successful that Square Enix needed to remove the game from sale. One month later, and only now is the producer and director Naoki Yoshida addressing player concerns. With the limited server capacities at launch, Yoshida has explained that more servers will be rolled out all over the world, which will hopefully address the problem. Unfortunately, the delays in server rollout are unavoidable as the global semiconductor shortage wreaks havoc across the entire industry. Digital sales for Final Fantasy XIV will resume starting January 25th, while the free trial of the game will remain offline until server stability and rollouts has been addressed. For North America, the first phase of the server expansion will take place sometime in August this year, while Europe will see two phases, one in July and another in the summer of 2023. And that wraps it up for This Week in Gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.